Hello and welcome to What's in the Night Sky for November 2020. I'm Hayley and this month there are opportunities to see all five of the bright planets along with the Leonid's meteor shower and the beautiful constellation of Taurus the Bull. Let's begin by taking a look at the planets and you can see here that we are looking south um, at around half past four during the early part of November so just before the sun sets and if we just move time onwards a bit as the sun sets the first stars that you will see appear in the night sky are actually not stars at all but Jupiter and Mars um, here we go so you can see Jupiter and Mars starting to emerge out of the evening twilight and then shortly afterwards they'll be followed by Saturn um, so a nice way to spot those bright planets is to go outside around dusk and look to the south and wait for them to start to pop out if we just move time on a little bit so it starts to get nice and dark you'll see that Jupiter and Saturn are moving towards setting quite early so during November you'll want to get out in early in the evening if you um, would like to see Jupiter and Saturn and as the month goes on they will set earlier and earlier so uh, something to look out for in the early evening. Mars will still be visible most of the night and being just past opposition um, Mars is still a spectacular sight in a pair of binoculars or in a telescope it still is showing a considerably larger disc than you might see at other times um, and if we have a little zoom in to have a look at a telescopic view of Mars so we, you might like to try if you have a small telescope to spot some of these darker and lighter features on the surface of the planet and if we take a quick look at a telescopic view of Jupiter and Saturn as well so here we have Jupiter you might be able to spot Jupiter's four Galilean moons and you might also be able to spot Jupiter's north and south equatorial cloud bands and if you have um, a, a modest sized telescope then you might be able to spot the great red spot as well which is a great storm raging on Jupiter and taking a look at Saturn again with a small telescope you might be able to spot Saturn's uh, large moon Titan and Saturn's rings and Saturn's rings are in a good position for observing at the moment so a small telescope will enable you to pick those out so that's three of the five planets I said we would be able to spot during November so if you go out in the early evening take a look for Jupiter and Saturn any time during the night for Mars and then if you want to stay up all night or get up nice and early in the morning then you may find that you are able to spot Venus so here we go Venus has just popped up and we're around 5 a.m. now and if you stay up even later or if you've got up nice and early you can see Mercury rising here as well so look for Mercury below Venus um, around an hour before the sun rises um, and see if you can spot it if you can get somewhere with a nice flat horizon then that will help um, Mercury reaches its greatest western elongation on the 10th so that is the best time to view it um, since it's going to be highest in the morning sky to enable you the best opportunity to, to spot it before the sun rises um, so you have Jupiter, Saturn and Mars in the evening and Venus and Mercury in the early morning and if you have a small telescope then you can have a go at picking out phases as well so here you can see that Venus is showing a gibbous phase at the moment let's take a look at the moon now and you might remember that in October there were two full moons the second one occurring on the 31st and the full moon in November occurs on the 30th and we're zooming in now to take a look at the gibbous moon that is on the 7th of November and the feature that I would like to focus on this month is the ocean of storms which is this huge ocean that I'm ringing with my mouse now 
and it's the largest of the seas on the moon the only one that we refer to as an ocean um, because it's over a thousand miles across when you are exploring the ocean of storms you might like to look out for the bright crater Aristarchus which I'm pointing at with my mouse now um, that is the brightest feature on the near side of the moon and while you're in the area you might like to also pick out the Copernicus and Kepler ray craters which I'm just showing with my mouse now as well um, nice bright uh, craters to look out for when you are exploring that side of the moon there's still a question about how the ocean of storms was formed it was the prevailing theory that it was an impact basin but there is some evidence from the grail mission that suggests that it may have been formed by internal processes within the moon itself the Apollo 12 mission landed in the Ocean of Storms, so the second crewed mission to land on the moon, and it was the first precision landing, um, and they landed within walking distance of the Surveyor 3 spacecraft that landed on the moon in 1967, and that meant they were able to retrieve parts of it to study, um, and they were able to study the long-term effects of that equipment being on the moon. If we stay with the moon for a little while, we can see how the moon pays a visit to various planets over the course of the month. So some opportunities to see the moon with planets, um, either with your naked eye, with a pair of binoculars, or you might like to photograph them with a camera. Um, one such opportunity occurs on the 13th of the month, um, and that is in the morning. Um, so we talked about Venus and Mercury to appearing together in the morning already. On the 13th, you also have the crescent moon along with Venus and Mercury, a very thin crescent moon on the morning of the 13th. So a nice opportunity to see those three together if you have a clear horizon um, on the morning of the 13th and a clear sky as well. Um, moving on to the 19th and we're going to go into the evening on the 19th now and you may be able to spot the moon and Jupiter and Saturn together we've got too late at the moment everything's set so I'm just going to go back to around 6 p.m. so here we go you've got the moon Saturn and Jupiter um, forming a triangle together and if we put a binocular view on then I think you should just be able to, uh, just about be able to um, fit the three of those into a binocular field of view so that might be a really nice thing to look out for so we've got a crescent moon Saturn and Jupiter forming a triangle on the 19th of November and finally on the evening of the 25th of November then you can see the moon below Mars so a nice chance to see a gibbous moon this time appearing just below the planet Mars in the sky let's look now at our constellation for this month so if we pop the constellation lines on and the constellation I want to focus on for this month is the constellation of Taurus um, it's a fantastic constellation to view in the autumn and the winter because it's so bright and there's so much to see in the constellation whether you're just viewing with your naked eye or you're using a telescope a nice way to find the constellation of Taurus is to use the very familiar constellation of Orion and most people um, can pick out the asterism of Orion's belt quite easily even if you are in a light polluted sky um, here we are looking towards the southeast at around 10 o'clock towards the end of November and if you um, follow the um, line of Orion's belt and follow it upwards then that will roughly take you to the area of Taurus the bull and if we put the constellation art on you can see here that Taurus is depicted as a bull in the night sky so you've got the two horns of the bull you've got the bright star Aldebaran which is known as the angry eye of the bull um, and Aldebaran is a red giant star 
um, and it is part of an open cluster um, this triangle shape open cluster called the Hyades and um, Aldebaran actually isn't technically part of the Hyades um, because it's much closer to us than the other stars in the cluster um, but it's in the same area um, and the Hyades open cluster is the nearest um, open cluster to the solar system and it has around 200 stars uh, and you can see it nestled within the horns of the bull um, and the, the V shape of the Hyades is um, represents the face of the bull. Um, in mythology, in Greek mythology, Taurus represents um, Zeus transforming himself into a white bull to win the affection of the princess Europa and Europa climbed onto the bull's back and he swam across the Mediterranean and took her to Crete. When you are observing the star Aldebaran, so we said that it was a red giant, um, so you can look for it, it will have an orangey red hue when you observe it, maybe you'll be able to spot that with your naked eye or with a pair of binoculars or a telescope. Um, it's often described as the angry eye glaring at Orion the hunter. Uh, interestingly, the Pioneer 10 space probe um, is heading out towards Aldebaran and will pass um, it will make its closest approach to the star in around two million years time. Um, who knows what it will find when it gets there. The other highlight of observing uh, Taurus is the star cluster, the Pleiades. Um, these are known as, uh, often known as the Seven Sisters. I'm going to put a binocular view on there for you. Um, you should be able to see six with your naked eye if you have reasonably good eyesight and you are um, observing under a, a reasonably good sky, so um, a sky that isn't too light polluted. Um, it's a nice test to go out and see how many of the Pleiades you feel you can pick out. Um, if you have a pair of binoculars, then um, it really does look quite amazing in the, the field of view of a pair of binoculars. And the Pleiades is actually my favourite binocular object. And I like to get out and um, view them with binoculars lots and lots at this time of year. Um, it's actually an open cluster of around 500 stars. And they all formed from the same um, cloud of dust and gas around 100 million years ago. Um, and the reason they're known as the Seven Sisters is because the seven brightest are named after the seven daughters of Atlas, the titan who holds up the sky. Um, and some people um, think that the cluster looks like a tiny version of the Big Dipper. So see if you can make out that shape when you look for um, the Pleiades in a pair of binoculars. If you would like to have a look out for some meteors this month, you could have a go at spotting um, the Leonid's meteor shower um, and that will peak around the 17th 18th of November um, and the best time to observe that is going to be after midnight um, in the early part of the morning. As the name suggests the Leonid's meteor shower originates in the constellation of Leo um, so here we are at around three o'clock in the morning on the 18th looking towards the um, east and you can see the constellation of Leo the Lion here and if we put the constellation art on you can see it depicted as a lion and the radiant of the meteor shower where the meteors appear to originate from is in the head of Leo the Lion. Um, the Leonid's meteor shower um, are meteors that come from Comet Temple Tuttle and they um, are known to be bright and fast meteors and if you are lucky, so your conditions are good, it's, you're in a nice dark location, um, you might see around 10 meteors per hour. Um, so a nice opportunity this month to get out and see some meteors if um, the weather is good around the middle of the month. Um, and you may be able to spot um, Leonid meteors f um, all month, but the, the best time to do it is around the peak, so around the 17th, 18th of November. So that brings me to the end of our What's in the Night Sky tour for November, and I'll be back again next month to talk about what we can see in December. <laughs>